What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel and what started out as an absolute meme build ended up evolving into the strongest Dragonite PvP build that I have ever ran in ESO to date. This build does absolutely everything. Battlegrounds, duels, open world, enjoy the clips. I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong every breath of Cause I can't move on till I let go Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoyed making them. Now every single clip that you saw was from my most previous live stream, it will be a card in the uh, top right hand corner somewhere up there if you guys want to go check that out. It was a 9 hour stream, what started out as a 3 hour stream somehow turned into a 9 hour stream because once you get started down the rabbit hole, you just can't stop. So I started saying that this was a going to be a meme build and honest to God it was. I was like well man, yo, what are the odds I can get permanent corrosive up and, and how effective is that? Well. It turns out it's very effective and not just very effective. It is the most effective build that I ever in this patch. I even started grinding Sea Serpent Squirrel very first. I tried for two days to get clips of that and it, it was it was tough. It was tough. And then I slapped on this corrosive one bar build and man, everyone just lit up like a Christmas tree the day I've never had higher damage. You saw in some of the clips I was getting 17K molten whips, which is absolutely nutty. Never have I ever hit a 17K molten whip in my entire life until this patch. 
go get your popcorn and go get your drinkies because this is going to be a very, very long in-depth build guide for you all with the Magic of Dragonite. So you can either run this as Magic or Stamina. Let me preface this. And also, let me preface this by saying the duels that you saw, that wasn't meant for, for any uh, negative uh, PMA, you know, whatever. I just wanted to show you guys that this build performs literally in every scenario. Those guys beat me just as much in duels than I beat them. So that's just how duels go, right? But I just wanted to show you all that it is actually effective and you don't have to change literally anything on this build for that to happen. This is truly a one build fits all type of scenario. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. So let's take a look at the character sheet. Everything here is completely unbuffed. This is using the Ogun Soul Ring. Spoiler alert, I'm sure you guys already know what I'm talking about. Um, all the stats are, uh, it is what it is. And when we come to the food, I played around with literally every single food in the game. And what worked best for me and my play style and my sustain is going to be the Bewitched Sugar Skulls. I'll show you how we're going to take care of all the sustain later. Because of the absolute dump that Zoss took on the Combustion Passive, which we were crushing off of so hard last patch. Well, guess what? This patch, we have a new passive to crush off of, and it's Battle Roar. So the whole idea behind this build is to have a high as uptime as possible on Corrosive Ball, maintaining our damage, our survivability, our sustain, and having a lot of utility for the build. And on this particular build, based on a little bit of RNG, we do have 80 to 90% uptime on our Corrosive. Now, there are some meme duo builds that you can run running our cases, which actually gives you 44 ultimate when you pop a potion and if you do OQ with another DK and you guys communicate and pop your potions at the right time you both will have 100% uptime on corrosive I'm just saying that now but since we're solo uh, well we don't really have that luxury now do we so um, we're running 45 magic at 19 in health uh, my race is Breton ideally you will want Imperial um, run the numbers I do believe the extra 6% on the ult reduction is going to give you one to two second less downtime on your corrosive so i do think that is the correct call but i'm not gonna spend 20 dollars or whatever it is on a race change token just for a build so yeah running the atro mundus as well now when it comes to the sets we're using now the sets guys i've spent millions of gold millions testing out literally every five piece like every build combination that i possibly could just so you guys don't have to thank me later right thank me later all the possible water combinations. I guys go check out the stream. We 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 hounded this out so many so many hours. There's so many frustrating hours, but we finally got it. And this is what we're coming up with. So the very first set gonna be running is gonna be potatoes or potentates. Um, this is going to be on your you have two dual swords. I'll explain why you have two dual swords in just a moment, not anything else. And then you're also going to have a one piece uh, jewelry as well. Um, we'll, we'll go with jewelry and when we get to that section. So the enchantments you want on your front bar is going to be poison and shock and then you want your trade to be decisive yes you want this to be decisive what decisive does since we no longer can't crush off the combustion passive charge is kind of irrelevant now to be honest with you all um, because it takes every three seconds to proc instead of every half second which is a, a big kick in the pants you know what i mean but uh don't worry we're crushing off battle war passive instead of combustion so here we are we're running decisive instead so whenever you gain ultimate you have a 27.5% chance to gain one additional ultimate. Now, this is insane. When you run dual wheel, these actually piggyback off each other. These have the potential to ping pong. So when you're watching your ult meter down in the corner, sometimes you'll see 20, 30, 25, just come out of absolutely nowhere. And that's because RNG Jesus is on your side. And when you generate ultimate, these are ping ponging back off of each other until one of them actually doesn't proc and it just kind of stops the process. So we have all kinds of ways of proccing this. We have our normal ult gener uh, generation. We have major heroism from the open soul ring, which we will cover. We have minor heroism from the potion that we are using. We're also running blood spawn. Okay, that's four different ways, and plus decides to piggybacks off each other. So technically, that's that's six different ways of generating ultimate, and it is pretty nutty. You may ask yourself, man, what if you run heartlands with this? Well, I tried running heartlands to double this effect. And it, it didn't really help that much. It probably gave me like an extra one second, maybe two seconds at best. I just don't think uh, that's the best five piece for what we're trying to accomplish here. So this is what we're running on front bar. Well, our only bar, actually. Uh, back bar is irrelevant because we only have one bar. Next up we're running is Blood Spawn. Um, I'm running this at medium and heavy. Um, when it comes to the traits, um, ideally you want this to be, instead of impenetrable, you want this to be heavy reinforced. If you truly want to min-max this build, um, I already wasted like 400 transmute stones and I wasn't about to waste another 25 or whatever. So um, call me cheap, call me frugal, and it is what it is. So 
blood spawn definitely this is 100 needed um the also regeneration from this is nutty it is freaking nutty guys there's also another monster set you lose my mind that also gives you um ultimate regeneration but this is best bang for your buck trust me on this okay last set we're running is going to be plague break now plague break is phenomenal i mean even take a look at the tooltips i really nothing buffed kind of sort of really you know you don't really do buffs on this anyway so um plague break is amazing um you want the idea to this build if you check out my my character sheet the idea is to have as low as penetration as possible i wish i could get my penetration even lower which i'm pretty sure i could if i ran like less lights or you know different rituals or whatever but the idea is to push your weapon damage as absolutely as high as possible while having as low spell and physical penetration as you possibly can to maximize the effectiveness of corrosive because corrosive gives you 100,000 spell and physical pin to all, all your drag damage attacks which is damn near everything on the build okay so hop back in to our uh, character sheet here um, again you want five well fitted one reinforced one in pin I do believe that's the best armor weights um, I do have a one piece training as well this is going to give you the, the health if you don't want to waste transmute stones on a uh, trainee there's an alternative craftable set i forget what it's called it's a 12 piece set um, it, the one piece will give you a health bonus but it's not as much as training so if you don't want to waste transmute stones on that that is a good alternative for you as well and then um uh, obviously open soul ring uh, this limits you to one bar um but it gives you a metric crap load of major and minor buffs and last but not least on the tooltip is major heroism this is why it's so viable on the dragonite because you have all these major buffs that you couldn't really get a major berserk major brutality a major force you would typically have on your dragonite and this is what is allowing us to push our crit damage so freaking high it's it's unbelievable now when it comes to your jewelry enchantments i'm running one infused cost reduction and the rest are um, infused weapon damage uh, that's entirely up to you if you're struggling with your sustain obviously you run a, another infused cost reduction and as long as your health pool is around 29k i would not dip below 29k health um if i were you guys because you do have to survive during the downtime of your corrosive which you take a look at our spell and physical resistances it's really not that high so um let's get into the bar setups now there are two different bar setups i want to show you guys um whether or not you want to use power lash or bolt and whip because those are two totally different play styles and we're going to go both go over both of them today okay so the very first setup we're going to go over is actually using power lash which is um not my preferred one but it is the most consistent so your five bars unfortunately there's no there's no six bar slot i wish to god that there was a six bar slot this would be the most broken build ever it, it, it would just clap any class's cheeks without hesitation so coagulating blood is going to be your heal when you need it i tried to not run a self heal and just crutch off of like shattering rocks and other ways to get your <clears throat> excuse me get your health back and the fact of the matter is when you're getting pressured by ranged opponents unless you're directly up on them yeah, not gonna heal whatsoever. You're gonna get your booty cheeks clapped, and it's gonna be a feels bad, so sad moment. So you have to have some sort of spam spammable help, a self heal for yourself. So coagulating blood is gonna take this place, and look at the tooltip on it. It's 11k on buff. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Rank fossilized and talons. The reason you want to run these instead of shattering rocks. So you during your rotation, ideally you want the talons people. When you talons them and do a light attack. Now you can proc the power lash, okay? Now, if they decide to roll dodge, oh no, it, it removes the uh, the unbalanced status effect that is going to allow you to proc power lash. Well, guess what? You can fossilize them again. And if you lie attack them again, you can get another power lash off. So that's the key, is to keep as much power lashes up as physically possible. If you go into a group of people, you'll see, you know, you saw in the, in, in the clips at the beginning, you run in and you toss down talons. If people don't roll out of that, you can sit there and power lash them indefinitely, and you're not going to die during your corrosive. So this is the trifecta of keeping up the most pressure on your, your bar, okay? Now, it may not have the most highest burst damage, but it's still really consistent. Um, the last skill on the bar here, you can change this out to whatever you want. You can change this to Venomous Claw, you can change this to Engulfing Flames for more AoE damage and coverage. You can change this to Deep Breath. But I personally prefer Burning Embers, even though they did nerf Burning Embers by approximately 50%. They also nerfed Engulfing Flames by uh, 4%. They did reduce the cost of Talons, which it makes this much, much more viable. So um, there are a lot of nerfs and buffs that kind of go into this build as well. They, they also kind of pseudo nerfed 
coagulating blood, but I really haven't felt the difference all too much when I'm low. Usually when I'm low, I crit for 15, 20 K heals sometimes, which is absolutely nutty by the way. So burning embers, the idea is to toss this on as many people as possible, just so you're getting some sort of healing over time on your front bar without actually having to spam coag. Because if you are spamming coag, you will run out of sustain. It doesn't matter how good your sustain is. I even slapped on Desert Rose, which is like the ultimate five piece double bar sustain set. And I found myself struggling with sustain just because I was spamming coag so much. So be careful when you're actually using this, okay? And last and simply not least is corrosive. Obviously, um, this is the whole bread and butter of the build with potentate um, active. Uh, our ultimate only costs 170. So when you come out of your corrosive, you will have approximately 135 to 140 ultimate, which will take you approximately another five or six seconds to get back to your corrosive again. So during that five or six seconds, you do have to live, okay? Um, you are a little squishy, so just play smart around that, all right? Okay, so here's the next build. This is my preferred build, actually, because it does offer an incredible amount of burst that people just simply do not expect. And before I hop into this, please like and sub, guys. I know a lot of you have watched the content here on the channel. You watch the video, but you're not sub. Come on. So you boy Horcrux a favor. Enjoy my shameless plug and please sub to the channel. It helps boost my content across the YouTube algorithm. It helps motivate me, helps inflate my ego, helps me keep motivated to, you know, keep producing content for you guys. Anyway, um, when it comes to this build, um, both builds are going to be running a specific potion that I think everyone should have, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it's very hard, I won't say it's very hard to play this build without minor heroism potions, but um, it does help a lot. So you do, um, I'll show you guys how to make this here. So uh, these are the heroism potions. Um, it gives you uh, a Magicka, you know, Major Analyte, uh, restores your stamina as well, which is really strong. And it grants you Major Endurance, but it grants you minor heroism. Minor heroism is pretty much quintessential when it comes to, like proccing your decisive traits. So you make these specific potions by Columbine, Dragon's of Blood, and Dragon's Rum. Dragon's Rum is really expensive, so if you know a farm for that, or you know a friend who has a lot of Dragon's Rum, just, just con them out of it. They don't even know why you need it, okay? And then the other potion I would really suggest running on um, this class, um, unfortunately you don't have access to Major Expedition. Well, with these potions you do, and you also get Minor Heroism, and you get uh, Lingering Health. So you get a nice little um, he um, healing over time effect as well. You make these by Scrib Jelly, Dragon's of Blood, and Dragon's Rum, okay? So. Let's get into the skills. So co coagulating blood still the same. Shattering rock, since we do not care about the unbalanced stats effect and we can't proc power lash for healing, we have to substitute our healing in some other way. So we're using the other morph of fossilized shattering rocks, which is going to give you a, a pretty decent heal actually when it affects ends. And when it crits, it's very noticeable. It's like a 10K crit, which is really surprising. Flames of oblivion is our bread and butter. This is our spammable. You're going to be using this to keep your seething fury stacks up literally like 100 percent of the time always try to have it times three available because you just never know when you're able to go in for that burst so this is our spammable compare um pair that with molten whip which is you know 11 can tools there that's nothing to shake shake a stick at and you can get this higher with continuous attack obviously but just buffing up our seething fury stacks you'll see a molten whip goes up like 21k tools there, which is really powerful considering you're going to have 100 spell penetration on this whip you're going to be hitting people like a freaking freight train all right and then last but not least um, is Burning Embers. Um, this is kind of a flex spot. Personally, I enjoy the healing from this. You can run Talons, you can run Engulfing Flames, Noxious Breath, Venomous Claw, Deep Breath, whatever guys, whatever you feel that you need. Um, I mean, you can even run the uh, Eruption Morph, not Eruption Morph, but Cinder Storm if you think you're gonna need the healing over time because surprisingly enough, you do have incredible amount of burst potential with Molten Whip and just Flames of Oblivion alone as you saw in the duels earlier. And then last but not least, we have Corrosive Armor. Okay, so let's check out our champion point system. So uh, this is going to be uh, relatively the same. So for open world, you're going to run uh, this pretty much verbatim. You're going to be running Master at Arms, Deadly Aim. You're going to be running Occult Overload. This is an incredible change. This has made 1VX impossible, especially on the Dragonite or really any bomb build or really any solo or very small group play class. It is Occult Overload. So this used to be only 4,000 damage. This has been buffed up to 12,800 damage. And guys, this is irresistible damage. Unless you're in like Misform or unless you're in uh, Corrosive. Actually, I think it might actually go through Misform. Uh, I've yet to test that. But unless you're in Corrosive, if someone pops next to you with this, that's 12,800 damage. Irresistible. It's going to hit you for that no matter what your resistances and mitigation are. Very, very strong. And then again, this can kind of piggyback off everyone that you're in a group with. And that's also a reason we're running Plague Break because it inflicts everyone with a status effect anyway. So you don't necessarily have to worry about not having a status effect up on anyone. And then Ironclad for our last blue CP passive. 
Uh, the, the green passives are just simply there uh, just for quality of life. I do suggest running a liquid efficiency because these potions are really, really expensive. So it's nice to get them back 10% of the time. And then we'll hop over into the red tree. We're running survival instincts because this is one cause uh, all your combat abilities, your roll dog, block, break freeze up to cost 25% less pretty much at all times. Pain's Refuge, which is going to negate um, a lot of incoming damage based on how many negative effects you have. Fortified and Balanced Vitality. Um, you don't need um, sustain wise. If you want to drop um, either Fortified or Balanced Vitality, if you're struggling with sustain or sustain by suffering, you can definitely do that. Um, we don't need to slot relentless, Relentlessness anymore because Oaken Soul intrinsically already gives us major protection, so there's no point in that CP. So there it is, guys. All right, that's all. Hopefully you found today's video pretty helpful. I tried to keep this as short and sweet as possible under the 15 minute mark. Hopefully I was able to do so in account post editing or products. Uh, please take care of that. Um, if you have any questions, guys, please reach out to me in the discord. If you made it to the end of the video, yo, thank you so much, especially my patrons and supporters here on YouTube. I honestly could not be doing it without you. Um, I really couldn't. Also, one thing to note before we head out. I want to do an ESO fashion show and start getting some tournaments started. So if you guys are interested in that, please let me know on Discord just so I can get a roundabout number who's actually interested in what. And if you are, you know, spread the word. You know, go to these other PvP channels like PvP Top High, Christopher, tell them, hey, you know, Horcrux is starting um, his own dueling uh, community. You know, kind of hit him up. Just, just, just mention it. You know, word of mouth really goes a long way um, in the PvP community, especially if it's negative, right? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's not go down that road again. But anyway, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. This has been Horcrux. Please like and sub. All right. Thank you. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace.